I hear a whole lot of defending of some monsters going on up in here. How much smoke do you need? You dolly! I want you on you! Made it to my spank bank. The hoodie says dolly victim. Victim of dolly. I'm gonna tell right out this motherfucker. You know why? Because I'm a tragedy pimp and I got a pocket full. Are you making money off the backs of kids? Or so, she said something of that nature. And I was like, damn sure am. <laughs> you know I am. I don't give a fuck. What'd you say, woman? Uh, you had several people trying to get my attention. Well, if you need to get my attention that bad, that it's like so important, all you gotta do is hit like a super sticker, the super chat. This video is protected under the Fair Use Act of 1976 for commentary, documentary, awareness, and educational purposes. False strikes are against YouTube's terms of service and can result in termination of your channel. What's up, YouTube? It's the Outlaw. I think I've seen a UFO. What, what is the Jimmy Jam Show? What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Lockdown Connection. I'm your host, Beetlejuice. And what is up, YouTube? It is your boy. Jimmy Jam. What is up, YouTube? It is your boy Dolly back in the house again tonight. Virginia, so represent motherfuckers. It's called two up, two down. I had to hear it. So do you. My video is not my size. I ain't made nothing off of these videos. I'm I'm going to school to be a PI when I get back to VA to seventh. I start school to seventh. I know you were going to pay for him to go into uh, investigative or whatever schooling, right. and you were upset that he was taking his channel kind of a different or getting too much drama. Crama. Actually, uh, Tina, that's not true. I wasn't upset. I gave Jimmy the money and I said, you do what you need to do with it. So you didn't care that he didn't go to the investigative. Well, I, I gave him money. And what did it cost? Support, I, I gave him school. money to support that expedition. Right, but you were upset. You were but bummed. No, but I wasn't no? upset. I wasn't upset when he didn't because I understood. Oh, he didn't go on the expedition. Okay, he didn't go. No, <clears throat> so I, I understood yeah. that maybe he couldn't have because you have to have certain resources. I continue to support him because I believe in him. I'm not blaming PJ. I think she's blaming I'm herself blaming a little, you. right, Dame? I'm no. not blaming you. I'm not blaming PJ. I'm blaming Dolly because he's a fucking fraud. I'll just learn from that and move on. Allegedly. That's in your you opinion. It. That's your That's opinion. More opinion. You got to blame yourself a little one for that, though, because come on. Yeah, I fucking, I've got you. You're right. Well, yeah. you, you learned, I mean, it's How much money altogether would you say, Dom Defer? I don't know that's right to ask, but that's up to her. Yeah, I spent a lot of money on him. I probably gave him uh, $20,000. The FBI can thank me for that. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm the one that got them up out of that house. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They would have yeah. been yeah. sitting right up inside that house. They would have been sitting right up inside that house. So you're welcome. Well, I just want you and, and Betty to be safe when you yeah. go back. And, so next time um, the FBI run up on me, uh, just remember, y'all owe me one. Okay? Y'all owe me one. Now. I gotcha. I gotcha. <laughs> That's what I'm telling you. Like, y'all owe me one, man. Y'all owe me one. I did y'all solid. Y'all got some evidence. Y'all got some evidence because I had them people shaking and baking. Me and Betty, right? So, right. They had to. Right. They had to. They had to retreat, and that retreat got that video. It got them on the news. It brought more attention to them in Georgia. So I think it did a lot of good. You can run, but yeah. you can't hide. Shocking off. Well, this is how Dolly Vision really helped the FBI and law enforcement. Spoiler alert: He didn't. Your baby's dead. Your baby's dead. Your baby's dead. Your baby's dead. Well, yeah, I hear like this. Yeah, I also said I was out there disorderly conduct. I never raised my voice. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit, don't get out here. Baby bullhorn on play. Baby, we can like look out for ourselves, get your belly. That's right. Go open that mouth, you're gonna get in a run quick. You wanna open it to tell how you feel your baby? Oh, yeah. I got real quick. Oh, yeah. They're turning up, they're turning up. I also said I was out there disorderly conduct. I never raised my voice. 
Come over here and put a hand on me. Come put a hand on me so I can destroy your little ass out here. I'll mop this goddamn street with you. Okay? Catch me. You pimp, and I got a pocket full of fucking money. Do it again. Watch how fast I go to jail in Georgia. Do it again. Do it again, bitch. Do it again. Do it again. I'll go to jail right out this motherfucker. You know why? Motherfucker. You know why? Because I'm a tragedy pimp and I got a pocket full of fucking money. I also said I was out there disorderly conduct. I never raised my voice. Dolly needs a vacation. It's been hard dancing in a turtle mask in front of a murder child's home for donations. Get back to VA. It's Halloween. I want to do some Halloween stuff. I want to go hit a haunted house and stuff like that. You know, just Halloweeny shit, right? I've been I'm on the road. I'm ready to chill. Can a kid go missing in Hawaii, please? That would be great. I've worked with uh, victims for probably the last 25 years in very different capacities. I started out in the trauma unit, and I kind of moved into therapy, and as well as a court-appointed victim's advocate. It's kind of scary to see what social media is doing to some of these families right now. Families that are potentially victims, and right now they are victims. There's been no proof that they have anything to do with their missing loved one. And it's very concerning that I see people like Dolly Vision making money off of this with clickbait titles like, was she pregnant? Or did this happen? Or the essay of this one? I don't understand why people don't take offense to that because it, it's very offensive. I don't think anybody should think this is acceptable and this is okay. These are our children. All of these missing and, and murdered children are our children. I get the creators on YouTube absolutely deserve to be paid for what they create and what they put on YouTube, but at what cost? I don't know, I, do you ever consider if this was a family member of yours? What if this was you? What if you were being the one accused of doing everything and anything under the sun simply because somebody said it? Law enforcement has made it very clear. They give us their timeline, they give us their everything, but nobody cares. Because what's more important are these yellow breaking news clickbait titles, right? Those are fun. Well, they're not fun. And after you move on from this case, like you find another victim, you find someone else to make money from, these families are left alone, broken, and re-traumatized. And I'm asking you to please stop doing this. I'm asking you to put yourself in these families' position. The other thing that I want to say is, later on in this video, you will hear from four different women. You will hear allegations from threatening revenge porn, all the way up to sexual assault. All I can tell you is they are allegations. Dolly Vision says that he is not guilty, that he did not do any of this, and it's all made up. So I ask you to make your opinion from that. You have to look at all sides, and I think that's very important. But you also have to understand where there's smoke or fire. Rumors, gossip, lies, and drama for views, and high-profile missing and murdered children's cases. She's a snitch. Good luck getting your drugs. Good luck getting your drugs. Everybody share this video. Everybody in Savannah, share it. Let everybody know. Post on your community wall. Billy Joe is an informant for the Savannah police, okay? Dolly told you. I bet you $100. Anybody who wants to put the money up, I ain't wrong. Anybody. Take the bet. That woman's an informant. You're a snitch informant that are, is selling your ass on the streets of Savannah for drugs, for bikers that you ain't even getting all the drugs for. Right? Every time I want to start this bitch, I got to be like... <laughs> that, right? So you got to blow it to start the vehicle, right? And then... Five minutes after you get down the street, I don't know if they, they switch up drivers or what they do, but then you got to blow in it again. I mean, it videotapes me 
it GPSs me and it sends it all to my probation officer. It's almost as sad as what's going on in the situation with the missing baby and being gone. It, it, it's that fucked up. You know, you add that to that. And this is the element, the reason why Quentin is missing. It's Billy Joe. You brought them kids up to be the way they are. You made Leilani the way she is. Yeah, Quentin! Quentin! Yo, fucking get the fuck out of here, you fake ass crying. You, you running out there, please, please help me. Right, right. Oh, thug bitch. But when everybody walk down the street, you talk all this cash shit on shares. When we walk down the street, you ran. You ran because you a coward. You ran because you were a coward. You thought, oh, we're going to get somebody locked up and they're going to leave me alone. No. Nah, no, nah, you just turned up the heat in your community. Giving drugs to Summer, alcohol to Summer, alcohol to other little kids, not just Summer, molesting other little kids, drugging other little kids. You give me a reason why we build a prison. Give me a reason. For people just like that. That's why we build them. Now they said Grandis wasn't bad. Grandis was a pill popper. She likes to pop pills. And that's where the theory of Summer maybe getting into her medicine comes from. Because Grandis like the Percocets. You know what I'm saying? And the badass kids. Let's talk about the boys. The reason she had to be in the hospital, Grandis, is because the boys kicked the shit out of her. Allie went on to verify that again, too, that, you know, the reason Grandis was in the hospital is because the boys put her in the hospital. If you saw part one, you saw Dolly commit battery on a female. Let's see what Dolly does when he's threatening men on the Internet. BK, when I see him, we're going to have a little talk, okay? Me and BK going to have a little talk. BK, I'll be down in Tennessee next week. Show up. Show up in Tennessee, BK. Show your ass up in Tennessee. Show up here. Show up here. Matt BK, show up anywhere that I'm at. Anywhere. Anywhere. I'll give you the days I'm going to be there. I'll give you the times I'm going to be there. You show up any place I'm at, ever. Show, come come on. I'll give you the ticket. I'll pay for your flight. You know what I'm saying? You want to come hang out with Beach? Come hang out with Beach. You want to come to Georgia? I'll pay for your ticket tonight. Hit me up on the message. Hit me up in the DMs like you like to do. You want to come to Georgia? Bring your ass here tonight. Uh, they also said I was out there disorderly conduct. I never raised my voice. begin with and you guys are out partying and drinking well that baby's dead in well, the landfill playing with garbage on its head on its head i'm not the one that put him there maybe you should go have your daughter or your granddaughter do it y'all shouldn't even be around baby what are you gonna do assault a woman that that and that sounds what? just about right that's the reason, that's, that's why your that's family's right. in this predicament right now. Because you're violent. The violence from that household is what contributed. Your family's right violent is why your daughter is going to prison. That's why she's going to prison, because you people are violent. Everybody's it's violent. Big. It's big. You out here being violent. Step away from me. I don't have to. You step in my bubble. I'm right don't, here. Don't step Here's in my bubble, deal, sir. I would tell you, step something. away from me. Why? Why? Step Why? away from me. You got nothing but a mouth, I'm going to tell you. You got no ass to no, mouth. This is how Dolly Vision talks about an elderly veteran who was upset. Dolly Vision spent weeks screaming in front of his home for donations. The man didn't or attempt to hurt anybody. Dolly, back in the house, crazy stuff going down in Georgia. We're going to talk about it. I got Tattooed Rebel with me. I got Paper Cut Tina with me. Um, also, we are taking uh, pre-orders on Dolly merch, T-shirts, and soaps. I got to get my broke ass back to Georgia. Apparently, three people went to jail today. Dude, you know, punk ass that cry down there that lives in the meth lab. Apparently, Ethan came out with a baseball bat acting crazy as shit, apparently. Y'all are in my rear view, okay? Look, I don't even see you back. Y'all only see the headlights. Your headlights are missing like Kylie Rodney's, okay? And our third breaking story this afternoon, this time in Nevada County. Authorities have ruled the death of trucky teen Kylie Rodney is accidental.
and say there is no evidence suggesting foul play. The two-week-long search for Rodney ended back in August after her body was found along with her vehicle at Prosser Creek Reservoir in Truckee. Her death was the result of drowning. Y'all are in my rear view, okay? Look, I don't even see you back. You only see the headlights. Your headlights are missing like Kylie Rodney's, okay? Nice to see you too. Hey Dolly, be careful. Prayers for your safe travels. Cajun Navy took over. Well, Dolly about to come up into the game. Dolly be there today. We can go see if we can fall into that river. We want to take you to Nashville right now where police there say they found the body of missing college student Riley Strain. Let's listen in. Uh, at a company that adjourns the uh, Cumberland River that had been searching for uh, anything that would uh, pop up on the river, um, and especially looking for Riley Strain if he would uh, surface here. As they were removing um, an object from the river, uh, they saw, they noticed uh, what appeared to be Riley Strain um, pop up. Uh, the fire department uh, was called in, um, retrieved the body from the river. Dolly Vision searches, or hunts as he likes to call it, for missing children for donations, often on a live stream. Cody Bigsby captured the hearts of people in the community and beyond. We've wanted this for 26 months and we finally got it. A jury found Cody's father, Corey Bigsby, guilty of murdering him and concealing his body. After hearing closing arguments from attorneys on both sides, it took jurors roughly two hours to come to a unanimous decision. Supporters of the boy let out a sigh of relief inside the courtroom when the clerk read the guilty verdicts. Oh my God, I wanted to get up and scream, uh, but I couldn't, I couldn't. I wanted to get up and scream, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Chan. All right, come on. All right. Okay, put his back up again. Okay. Okay. Thank you guys. Y'all have a blast one. Okay, we're going out in the Zekia territory. We begin to hunt for little Cody Bixby. January 31st, 2002, this little boy went mixing. We're here to find him. Let's do it. We gotta be really careful when we moving stuff around like this because this is where snakes are going to lay, but this is a black tarp. Right. So we got a black tarp here and actually it has a little bit of weight to it. Not only that, we got a bunch of stuff buried here. Like there's stuff out in these woods, there's tarps wrapped up. This is the type of stuff we're looking for. And I don't know how they can leave this stuff out here and not, not go through it, but this area was searching. This is right on the wood line.
it was an emotional day in Fruitland as police dug through a backyard searching for the remains of missing Fruitland boy Michael Vaughn. And tonight so many questions still remain. Thank you for joining us here on this special edition of the Saturday News at 10. I'm Shira Matsuzawa and you watched as that search was happening live right here on the News at 5 and 6. Take a look now. This is an updated map of the area. The home is about four minutes away from the Vaughn's neighborhood where Michael was last seen. The then five year old went missing in July of last year and there's been a nationwide search since KTV was first on scene today and Jude Binkley walks us through what we know so far. Fruitland Police Chief J.D. Huff confirmed they're looking for missing Michael Vaughn's remains in the backyard of this house on Red Wing Street in Fruitland. On Saturday afternoon, law enforcement and search crews dug up the backyard of a home nestled in this Fruitland subdivision, only four minutes away from where Michael Vaughn lived and was last seen. Police got a search warrant to scour this house on Red Wing Street in Fruitland Friday night and all day Saturday. Fruitland Police Chief J.D. Huff said they received a credible tip, one of more than 1,200 tips they've fielded about Michael's case since he went missing on July 27, 2021. At a press conference this summer, Huff told reporters a legitimate tip brought their investigation back to the area of Fruitland. Fruitland PD, Idaho State Police, and Idaho Mountain Search and Rescue used heavy machinery, including a backhoe, to dig. They cut down a tree and part of the fence. Canines were also out, helping search for any remains. Huff says a couple lives at the house but doesn't own it. He isn't aware of any connection they have to the Vaughn family. No matter what's happened, it's been tragic for the family, and that's, and that's tough. In this coming year, if I don't, if they haven't found nothing today, and they don't find him in that backyard, then I'm not going to go out to Fruitland, Idaho yet. If for some crazy reason they find Michael Monkey Vaughn in his backyard, I need my mom to start looking for plane tickets because I'm going to probably fly out to Idaho. Taking money off that little girl's fucking back for the last fucking two and a half years and not wanting to help a fucking soul but yourself, your own pocket. Don't care about nobody else on the whole fucking planet but yourself. So all you people out there watching this go down when y'all took thousands and thousands of dollars off that little girl's fucking name should be absolutely ashamed of yourself. Absolutely terribly ashamed of yourself that when somebody that's actually there that needs it, they don't fucking get it. They don't get it. Right? They have to get up here and literally fucking beg for it. When y'all stole just that ungodly amounts of money. Un just, you can't even you can't even count it. Like, I heard so many nightmares when I came into true crime. So many nightmares, right? And the same people that were doing it before I got here are still doing it. Still doing it. Y'all are pieces of shit, right? Pieces of shit. Terribly, like terribly, terribly bad pieces of shit. For everybody that supports that, y'all are aiding this shit so bad. For everybody that clicks on them hateful, monster-ass videos just to attack people, y'all are helping this. all about the Benjamins. Made me want to do my P. Diddy dance. All about the Benjamins. What? Right? I didn't know it was about the money. Why did anybody tell me it was about the goddamn money? The reward is 70k and all I gotta do is cuddle up the candy? Yeah. Give me, go ahead and write my check. Hawkins County. Write my check. I'm about to cash this shit in. A missing child's mother threatens self-harm. Dolly sees a money-making opportunity. If you are struggling, dial 988. You are valued. Somebody get me the number to Hawkins County, right? Something, right? This lady just texted me that she's going to kill herself. She had never hit me up before. None of that. I'm going to give you all a few minutes to tune in. I don't want to call the emergency line. What's up, Molly? When we get a thousand likes, 
Oh, I'll read you this message. A thousand. Y'all let me know when we hit a thousand. milestone in an East Tennessee missing child investigation that has captured national attention. Summer Wells has been missing for 1000 days. The five year old disappeared from her rural Hawkins County home in June of 2021. The little girl liked Paw Patrol and was preparing to start kindergarten. If alive, she is now eight years old. And here's the TBI's latest age progression image of what she could look like today. Summer's mother says the little girl was last seen inside her family's Beach Creek home. The TBI calls the search for Summer one of the most exhaustive and involved missing child case it's ever investigated and promised not to stop searching for Summer until it finds answers. She is still the subject of an Amber Alert. Anyone with information can call 1-800-TBI-FIND. We up in the woods. The hunt continues. Land, air, and sea. My selfie stick bent. All right. Let's see what we got out here. Warmed ah! on, up in here. All right. I gotta get me a better selfie stick. For sure, but the terrain is, is pretty crazy. You gotta watch out for snakes. Man, here, watch your steps, things of that nature. But been searching the water, been searching woods. Gotta get the app for the drone stuff right. About to go in here, turtle style. Drop down to the bottom, feel around, see if we can find anything. Uh, you never know what could be in here. There's been rumors about somebody could throw a phone in here. If you take your this time. It's not the cleanest part of the water. If you was gonna swim. Dolly Vision out here saving the kids. That is until he jumps up on their platforms on the internet. Horrible parents in my day. I have, you know, nothing quite that bad. But I've seen like the Nike guys, man, some people just don't deserve to have kids. And it's, it's not only physical abuse, but mental abuse. I think sometimes it's worse than physical abuse because I see people all the time talk to their kids like, hey, and I think, man, when a kid is small, you need to encourage them not to try to destroy them. Oh, yeah, losers with no life. Play with some Legos. Get a hobby. You get a hobby. Get a fucking job. Oh, fuck, fuck, rap, rap ain't working out for you, homie. Oh, yeah. better, better than your YouTube, better than your YouTube channel. Better than your YouTube channel. I'm better than your YouTube channel. I'm about to pick up your new EP. That's why your that's why your I'm YouTube channel is falling off. That's Don't why you got can. canceled. Let me get some crack, bro. <laughs> Psych. <laughs> but guess what? I ain't falling off my pocket. What? Let me get. Oh yeah, your crack didn't fall out. You fucking crackhead. Uh, Great job. Ah, uh, just got your rap career is going as far as SoundCloud three plays. Shut up, boy. You want to three plays? Three, three plays. Jimmy Jim's is the troll. And that was one of the plays. Oh, yeah, three, three plays. plays. I got more than three plays. You must be looking at the wrong SoundCloud, old man. Exactly. He has seven. Yeah. Damn, sped money. Damn. Seven Yo, bro, plays. Don't, please, please don't say my name like that. I, I think. I think. That's rude. You're bullying a minor. I'm telling. You. Yeah, for real. You're making fun of my autism and everything. I'm yeah, Jimmy Jams, don't worry. Yeah, for real. I don't care two craps about your autism. I know this people, little troll is supposed to be bumping the ground instead of playing on YouTube. I have no idea what you're saying, bro. You know what I'm saying. You know what you and you and Cal Gobby doing. Yo, you're weird, bro. You be on that I love fantasy shit. Yo, I don't know why you fantasizing about a kid and a cow, bro. You're weird. That's what you like, don't you, little creep? I I, I was just thinking, man, ain't you his hype man? Ain't, that, ain't you his hype man? 
Nah, bro, you're like um, little kids. I'm confused. He is. What was I hyping up? What was I hyping up? You were hyping up them udders. You were hyping up them udders. What? Yo, you're udders. weird, bro. Yo, you're, why are you talking about D to a little kid, bro? That's why he got exposed by that little kid, and I hit him up, and he said you were trying to get, like, pics from him, you fucking creep. You smoke crack for a living. Can you get out of here, please? Like, gosh. Exactly. You, you have nothing better to do. While Dolly was in Tennessee on the Summer Wells case, he thought it would be a good idea to hunt down her 15-year-old friend, Hunter. Hey, man, are you Hunter? Um, I'm a YouTuber. Are you interested in making some money? I wanted to speak with y'all. Not interested? All right, where's you? Okay, I've seen some of your videos. I'm friends actually with uh, Bullhorn Betty and Molly that came and seen you and talked to you. I was in town today looking. I went by Ben Hill Road. I was trying to get a hold of Candace to see if I could uh, cut down all that debris that is around the Summer Wells sign. So I sent her some messages and uh, to see if I could do that. I just wanted to come by and say hello to y'all. You know, I have been covering the case for about the last three months or so, you know, but if y'all are interested in an interview, I'm willing to pay for the interview. But if not, you know, OK, guys, well, it's good to see you. Nice to meet you. OK, they didn't want to do it. They didn't want to do it. They said, nah, that's him. He was looking. He wouldn't answer. He wouldn't answer. So. Damn, they wouldn't answer. So damn it. Damn it. But I now I know what he looks like. So if I would have held the phone out, Ali came out. That was Ali that came out. So uh, I should have told her I was somebody else. Should have just been like, I'm fucking, I don't know. But she wasn't going to come off nothing. She wasn't coming off nothing. Some people in the chat know me as Missa. I've been Jimmy's girlfriend for over two years now. I just found out this past Monday he's having sex outside the relationship locally, going out of town on all these trips and vacations, and not just with Bullhorn Betty. There's other women he's screwing along the way there and screwing along the way home, as long as screwing her and screwing me. He's manipulating women. He's video recording them without their consent blackmailing them and he will expose them to people this is why i've apparently never heard anything or when i've asked certain people they've never let me know anything allegedly there's a rumor he's selling these things online to people that it's just quite a big crazy scenario everybody thinks they're the only one in his life but this past year he's been with 31 different women whether it's been sex video chatting in real life or just however or whatever i just want attention to be brought to this i want you to know he's using this platform as a predator he's not to elicit good cause he, he, he doesn't have any good purpose to be on youtube he's not out here trying to save little kids betty or we're going to scam so they can go on vacation they've already been on for this year on all the viewers dollars and I've been stupid enough to pack his bag to go send him with another woman. And hear video messages of, of him walking someone through oral sex for him. To see pictures of text messages he's done. To see his penis photos he sends to everyone by about the third time you're chatting with him online. He's whipping his penis out, ladies. That's predatory. Then what's even more predatory is few chats later when he's having you go naked for him and he's telling you how to perform playing with yourself for him he's recording you he's taking screenshots he's recording that video and then he's going to threaten you like he did one other lady who threatened him to come and tell me he said he was going to expose her with these videos she had no idea of to her family to her work to ruin her livelihood 
to shut her up and has had her in fear since then. I have not feared Jim. I never have and I never will. And I want all y'all out there to know you don't have to fear him either. I'm giving everybody a voice, a voice to finally be heard that he can't shut down. That nobody can say, oh, it's a troll. Oh, she's angry. Oh, she's bitter. Oh, she's crazy. Oh, the YouTube shit's getting in your head. You're taking this shit wrong. There will be no confusion going forth on who Jimmy Williams is. He's a woman beater. He's put his hands on me several times. He's a serial cheater. He's a manipulator. He is a liar. He has no soul and no heart. And at the end of the day, everything is about the almighty dog. Trigger warning, a sexual assault survivor tells her story. This is from an interview that Jimmy's ex, Missa, who's It's a Mood on YouTube, did with one of Jimmy's ex mods, Free to Be. Uh, at the Upchurch concert, Jimmy went down there. She met him down there to go to the concert. Okay, I just touched down in Nashville. Now I just don't know where the hell I'm going. To try to meet my ride, okay? <coughs> but I successfully made it to Nashville. So I hope everyone out there is doing well. I think I'm in the wrong parking garage. That's what it is. I think this is where Ubers and buses come and get you. I think I should have went to the left. What's up, people? I heard Candace Wells is in Nashville today. Well, we're also in Nashville, baby. All right, this is where the cabs pull up. I'm not sure I'm in the right spot. I've been trying to call Free to Be. Free to Be, if you're watching, I don't know where the hell you're at. And I don't think you're this way because that looks like interstate. So we're going to circle back to this other parking lot over here. Bear with me. Just bear with me, y'all. Um, this is difficult because... I have been a mod for Jimmy for four or five years. And when I found his channel, I was in a very dark, dark place. And I still tend to fall back to that place because I lost my daughter, my beautiful daughter in 2018. And I lost her brother 11 months later. So to find the channel occupied my mind and uh, brought me more into the light so that I didn't do things that we're going to really tear my family apart worse. Let's just put that out there. And so I actually give him credit for he saved my life. His channel saved my life. And uh, I, I had his back. I'm loyal like that. I had his back when people dogged him, tore him down. I was right there to try to pick him back up. <clears throat> Came a point in time, and I thought he was my friend. Never did I ever see him in a sexual way or I was never attracted to him. Not, not to mention that when I met him, he's like five foot five. I, I like tall men, dark hair. That's what I'm attracted to. I'm not attracted to five foot five dudes. I'm just not, I never was. He was my friend. And even when he came down to go to Ryan Up Church, I was so excited because I had never seen him. Jimmy had never seen him. And supposedly, that was supposed to be Ryan's last show, live show. His whole family was on stage. It was amazing. Um, you know, and Ryan gave us those tickets. You know, picked him up at the airport, took him to his hotel. Partied our asses off downtown. And when you go to Nashville, you're wore out. You're, you're walking and walking and walking and going from bars up and down stairs all over the place. It wears you out, you know. Then on top of that, to go to a concert, you know, and wait in that long line, you're wore out. But anyway, I'm just going to try to get to this so that I can get it out of the way. <laughs> um, I told him I wasn't attracted to him. And I said, I didn't think that he felt that way either. And he was like, why? I said, I just didn't. I'm just not. Um, we didn't have much time. Um, before he was leaving, you know, to get on his plane or whatever, but um, he's, he jumps right on me, okay? I'm just going to put it out there. He jumps right on me. I'm not going to be graphic, so 
I'm, I'm sorry if you don't understand what I'm about to say, because I'm not going to be graphic. If you don't understand it, ask somebody, because I've, I've talked about this enough. It's making me relive this. Um, <clears throat> so I finally, I took, I grabbed his nipple and I twisted it so damn hard. It was his, his left nipple. I twisted it and I pushed him back down onto the bed. And I said, we, excuse my language, but I'm going to tell you what I told him. I said, stop. We aren't fucking. And he sat, he just stayed there. I thought he just was going to stay there. And I caught my breath. Mm. And this little dude <laughs> took his elbows, went right under my fucking arms as quick as he could. As he pulled up my shirt and my bra and put it over my face. So my arms are to up in the air and to the side. And I can't move my arms. He's got his elbows under my arms. And his forearms are up against my chin. Um, and all I'm going to say from here is this. He was able to knock at the door. But he didn't get inside the house because he puked outside. And if you don't understand that, I'm not going to go any further. Because this is very difficult for me. I don't have any reason to make it up. I don't have no animosity about women, jealousy, none of that. I never felt that way for him. So if any of you think that's the case, you couldn't be more wrong. And that's where I'm going to leave that there. Um, but I want people to know that if you want him coming and knocking at your door, you already know what you're doing it for. I didn't have those clues. I didn't have those warning. Yeah, Frida B. Where's Frida B? Frida B. She got mad and tripped out and joined the dark side too. Yeah, I know she I did. Think, I'm waiting for Free to Be to come to me and apologize. Free to Be, if you no, listen, I think you apologize. need to go to Free to Be and, and apologize. Do. No, no, I don't. I think Free to Be owes me an apology, and she needs to come to me when she apologizes. You know, then I'll talk to you. But uh, I think she. That's owes not me you. Apology. You didn't hear what she was saying. saying I heard what she said, and that's why she owes me an apology. And she knows she owes me an apology. So y'all, oh, really? y'all hear Free to Be come to her senses, and you'll hear her come up here one day and apologize. I hope anyway, because I thought I thought about Free to Be as an actual friend, and she said some pretty horrible. Yeah. Things. Yeah. So. You know, I believe she owes me an apology, and if you're listening free to be, you know you owe me an apology. So I'll be waiting for that. Oh, God, I think you're supposed to be waiting a long time. And no, 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 because he knows I'm right, okay? It was right really? right. You don't say horrible things like that. It ain't true. You just don't do that. That is horrible. You know, and it ain't, you know, I don't know why or what the motivation for that was, but I considered her a friend, and she did that stuff. I know. So. She considered you a friend. I know. That's why I can't believe she did it. That's the, the craziest thing. I was like, that is so horrible. You know, but it is what it is, you know. He didn't report it for, you know, a thousand reasons. A million. I was very drunk. I met some guy in this bar. He started trying to kiss me and and I said, no. He takes my left leg and raises it on his shoulder. He went to put his hand in my panties and I tried to kind of deflect his hand and that's when he slapped my hand. And I blacked out. And he um, sat up and he looked at me and that was, I guess, the scariest moment for me because I could tell he was deciding whether he was actually going to stop or not and that was the moment that I realized that I had thought I was in control of a situation that I was not in control of it. And all. I blame myself for putting myself in that situation. I knew that I had no proof. I could hear people's judgment saying, well why did you do that? It was your I fault. I was still in like physical pain from this and sitting there going, oh well no one's gonna believe it. It was my word against him. Everyone was just gonna go, this girl just, you know, slept with this guy and changed her mind. I wasn't the perfect victim I figured who's gonna believe some cokehead college girl. I didn't like try to fight him off or I didn't slap him around or, you know, I didn't pick up the phone and call 911. I didn't know that I was important enough to, um, to drop.
draw boundaries around what people could and couldn't do with my body. Who wants to come forward with the literal most violating thing that can happen to you, relive it, and then have people telling you that you're making it up. This is must be pretty bad what happened to her because, you know, just talking about it, you can see she's reliving it, okay? I spun around, so now she's in my face like this. As soon as I can see her, I grab this bitch by the neck. Pow! And I mean, I squeeze so tight on her neck, I can feel my fingers touch. I mean, I say, I can feel them touching. Look, she's, she's gurgling. I can hear her. I had a bent over her car choking, and she still wouldn't let go of my hair. I'm, I look, I'm looking at her face, strangling. I be strangling on the shell. I'm like, let go of my fucking hair. Let go of my fucking hair. Let go of my fucking hair, right? And you can see her turning purple, right? And look, I said, I told her, I said, the bitch gonna punch me. Only need to supply me with some content like quick, like now would be great. Do you ever rub about me before? I would love to suck on my dear girl. Oh my god. You're so bad. I love it. Yeah, it's where you store people you want to beat off to. You know what I'm saying? Um, now you've made it to my spank bank. Well, the cop has never asked me for any nude pics and he's asked everybody else. That's not fair. That's almost insulting because he's asked everybody. That Mo sent him yeah. nude pictures. <laughs> oh, okay. And you know what she did? This is the funniest thing. He he messaged Mo, and he knows that Mo's engaged. And he was like, "You're so beautiful. Send me some pictures of you." Let me tell you what this bitch did. She went and put on the most clothes you could possibly imagine and even wrapped a scarf around her neck and sent him facial. Oh, no. and, and Avery's got those pictures too. When's the, when's the last time you had any contact with him? Um, probably towards the end of July, 1st of August. Um, I have pretty much been chewing his ass out because he got a hold of me the end of May. Um, mm -hmm. Let's just say this. Um, I cut my ties with him and then he come back in January threatening me. Um, hadn't talked to him, hadn't had anything to do with him, had stayed out of everybody's way. And I come back and I get threatened through a phone call and through text message and messenger. And that was in May? That was in January. January. Why, why was he threatening you? Good question. I didn't know for a lot of months. I've gotten a vague understanding now, but I still don't have a clear answer as to how it all went down. But he wouldn't tell me. He was just threatening that I had sent screenshots of something to somebody and that if I could play that game, he could play that game too. And that he would send everything. Or he, His statement was, I will send the videos you sent me to everybody you know. Mm -hmm. And in that statement, after someone has looked at the messages he sent me, that's his blatant either bullshit threat or he's actually video recorded things. I don't care if I'm sitting there talking about the color of the sky that day, but mm -hmm. I never gave him consent to record anything. And mm -hmm. Facebook video chats to me are just like a phone call. You hang it up and you go on about so, your business. Right. I don't have anything recorded. Mm -hmm. You know, um, mm -hmm. this is where I lost my shit. I'm like, okay, what the hell did I do? Nobody would tell me. It's these remedial bullshit drama games that get played online and I've not even been a part of it. So now um, I'm getting this call while I'm clocking out for lunch one day threatening me and nobody will explain to me why. So I told them, you want to keep this up? I will go file reports. Uh, you know, call, call me obsessed and, you know, tell me I'm trying to pit everybody against him. I'm not. I'm trying to get you to wake up. Mm -hmm. So that I don't have to look a year down the road and I'd be selfish. I don't have to see that you got drugged through the same situation I did a year after. You know, I don't want to see women go through this again. I don't want to see at Christmas time their credit cards maxed out because they've been giving donations to Dolly. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a whole different subject, a whole different day. But this manipulation and this vindictive using of people has got to stop. I probably was on some get back shit. The only thing that I would say that made me mad that he did, like that, it don't bother me. It don't bother me now to as much as it did, but at least you own it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm human, man. Like, you know, I can always, I can do some fuck shit and turn around and be like, you know what? <laughs> I fucked up. Like, you know what? I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, I can do that. 
because I don't, you know, that don't make me feel like less of a person to admit that, you know, that just makes me human, you know? Yeah, I got played and I was mad. I wasn't mad until, because it was all like a shock. Like once, and he, it was a slow play. It wasn't like a, you know, he hit it and then didn't call the next day or whatever, whatever. It was like a slow play. Like he hit it and it was cool after the fact. And then little by little, he started to like ignore my messages. And I was like, oh, well, wait a minute. You're not gonna ignore me. Like what? And so I got my fifis. And at that point, I really wasn't mad. I was just hurt, like sad, like, you know, like, oh no. <laughs> like, you know, I was doing an ugly cry. But when I got hot is when he sent, he sent some shit to my fucking brother. That's when I got hot. Cause I was like, why would you even like, you could have sent it to my boyfriend. You could have sent it to anybody. You know, you could have sent it to anybody. Like, it was just weird that he sent it to my brother. I was like, me and my brother not like that. It just, it, it made me mad. And then I was like, what kind of family do you got, dude? What kind of, what? <laughs> like, I can see him sending it to like an ex-boyfriend or a boyfriend or some dude I'm talking to, or I don't know, or put it on OnlyFans and, and make money on it. I don't know. He could have done so much other, but he sent it to my brother. And I was just like, well, weird. Dolly. Yeah, could you imagine him selling canter victim hoodies with a number on the back? Huh? Did you drop my hoodies? The hoodie says Dolly victim. Victim of Dolly. Doxing and threats and grips, oh my. The entire video will be out soon with parts three and four added in. Filing a, the, the false DMCA claim, somebody is trying to stifle the criticism, trying to get that person that they're filing the false DMCA claim against three strikes and then in that process, the person loses their channel. Now, this just happened to this particular individual that I want to talk about. I'm not going to name the person unless they want me to. Uh, I don't have a problem naming the person who filed the false DMCA to stifle the criticism. Videos. You see a video with me on it? Flag it. You see anything about me on it? Flag it. Strike, 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 strike. Anything about me when I get to the house, everything is getting struck. Videos. Three strikes are off YouTube. So I can tell you this, let me find three videos with me in it, and your ass is going off YouTube.